Egypt and Russia have followed suit since then, largely ignoring or casting doubt on the role of ISIS, while instead suggesting Ukraine and its supporters in the West are responsible. We've seen a version of this movie before, unfortunately. Joining me now is the former U.S. ambassador to Russia, Michael McFall, who knows a lot about the thinking there. I'm so grateful for you taking the time. And I don't want to overcrank this, but I think it's important to talk about. I mean, he didn't, Putin didn't mention ISIS-K in his remarks. He pinned some blame on the Ukrainians. What did you make of Putin's initial response to what was obviously a horrific attack where over 100 lives were lost? Well, first, it was a horrific attack, and I want to express my condolences to all family and friends who lost loved ones. Terrorism is never justified, and this mm -hmm. was a horrific terrorist attack, the biggest one in 20 years uh, in Russia. Second, uh, the thing that was first striking to me about Putin's reaction is how long it took. Mm. Uh, he didn't come out right away. He, he took some time to figure out the way they wanted to spin it, and then when he did, uh, make his statement, just as you just reported. Uh, he didn't mention ISIS-K. He didn't talk about uh, that particular organization, which, by the way, they've had troubles with for a long time. It would have been yeah. easy to explain to the Russian people why that kind of terrorist group would have attacked them. But instead, did this signal, this window was open for them to leave to Ukraine, you know, and think about the, how strange that is. Uh, for a window to be open in Ukraine for them to pass, that means a window would have to be open through Russia's military forces on the front line for them to pass. And subsequently, uh, there is this echo chamber to blame Ukraine. And I find this just absolutely disgusting. To use an event like this to politicize mm -hmm. it vis-a-vis -vis Ukraine is truly disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting, and it's so important to talk about because this probably isn't the end, which is what I wanted to ask you about. I mean, do you expect him and other pro-Kremlin voices, the media, Russian media is doing this, media, to escalate this Ukraine blame game? Is that what you anticipate in the days and weeks ahead? Yes, and you know what else is happening? Tragically, on social media, Americans are echoing this mm -hmm. propaganda, this disinformation. And so they feed it in, and that kicks around, and without any information, without any data whatsoever, and I, I won't name them now, but you'd go look them, prominent people, social media influencers, are repeating this lie, and that's exactly what Putin wants to have happen. And it comes against the background. I'm so glad you mentioned the American warning, because one, I think a lot of people might be surprised that even during these adversarial times between the United States and Russia, this intelligence channel keeps uh, open because we have a common interest in fighting terrorism. But second, that the State Department, where I used to work, uh, issued a public warning. That mm -hmm. is a really high bar, Jen. You don't just do that, uh, you know, on the fly in some meeting on Friday night at the embassy. That means that there was really credible information, mm -hmm. and we were trying to help Russia. And instead, Putin rebuffed us, he blamed us, and that may be part of the reason why he's bending over backwards to, to blame Ukraine. And by implication, if you're blaming Ukraine, you're blaming the West, you're blaming the, the United States. That's such an important point. I also spent some time at the State Department. It is a very high bar, important for people to know that. So in the 60 seconds we've left, I'm gonna ask you a hard question, which is the domestic impact here. I mean, look, this was a terrorist attack on Russian soil. Putin has kind of runs uh, as a person who's keeping the country safe. Maybe this is why he's doing what he's doing on Ukraine. But is this gonna impact at him at all within the country in terms of his domestic politics? Probably not. Uh, there's a rallying around the flag effect that's going on mm. uh, in Russia. State media is saying that. But there's also an undercurrent. There's another story that I see on my social media channels, which is to say, you're supposed to defend us and you're not. You're mm -hmm. calling Nazis and, and LGBT activists terrorists and you're not fighting the real terrorists. That narrative, it's a counter narrative, it's a minority narrative, but it will linger and it's already lingering in social media channels, independent media channels. It's a problem for Vladimir Putin. Thank you, Ambassador Michael McFall, as always, for breaking it down for us. What a tragic event. Our, our, our thoughts also go out to those who've lost loved ones.